In this recording, I'd like to go over table of contents. It got stuffed into the templates chapter in the book. I'm not sure it necessarily belongs there, but a lot of templates can have tables of contents. So I'm going to open my quarterly sales report that I created in an earlier recording. I'm going to open it so that I can modify it. Remember templates, if you double click them, it opens them. It opens a new document based on the template, but if you right click it, it opens the template itself. Okay, and in here I have a bunch of headings. And remember that in order to use table of contents, you have to use the heading styles. The way the table of contents works is it takes a look, it, it grabs every single heading one, two, and three file there, or every heading that you have in your document and turns it into a table of contents. So I have a blank line right here above my introduction, and I'm simply going to go to the references tab and insert the table of contents. There are two different kinds, one that starts with contents, one that starts with table of contents, or you can do a manual one. I'm not going to get into the manual ones here. I'm just going to go with contents. And notice I automatically get a table of contents. And also notice that when I click on the table of contents, it highlights. That designates that this is a field in my document. It's not actual text. It's not something that you type on. It's a field. If you press Alt F9 on your keyboard, it converts that field. It shows you the field codes. And notice the code is simply a TOC with a bunch of other stuff in here, headings one, two, and three, some other special stuff that I don't understand. It doesn't matter if you understand it, but the, what's important to recognize here is that there is field, there's a field value hiding behind here. Alt F9 brought that up and Alt F9 brings it back again. Also notice that as I leave the field, it unhighlights. Uh, me personally, it'd be nice to know that this is a field ahead of time. So what I like to do is have my field codes on all the time. You do that in the file options. Come down here to advanced and then scroll down to show document content. And by default, the field sh shading is set to when selected. I like to set that to always. You can always set it to never, but I don't like that one. Some people like the when it's selected. Others, like me, like always. And when you do that, it doesn't matter if it's selected or not. You can see that it is a uh, field. Okay. The field itself will not print that way. So it's, even though it's shaded here, it will not print shaded. It's only to designate that this is a field. And you can turn those field codes on. And if you turn those on at home, they'll stay on until you go back there and turn them off again. But I... I have them on all the time. All right, now that we've entered a table of contents, we it, it's not fixed. It's a one-time deal. You put it in. It is fixed. Excuse me. You put it in, and it stays. If you enter more information into your document, I'm going to actually blank line here. I'll remove. If you enter new information into your document or you make any changes into the headings, they're not going to be reflected. So let's change regional updates to regional reports. Now let me move down another line and see that it's still regional updates up here. In order to update this table of contents, you either use the update table button here or if you right click on the table, there's an update table button at the top of it. Even a left click would do that update table. And you have your choice. You can just update the page numbers if you haven't changed anything else, but maybe move some things around. But I need to update the entire table because I changed some titles. And then it updates. So whenever you make changes to any of the headings that are included in the table of contents, you need to update the table of contents. If you add new things, you need to update the table of contents. So I'm going to click at the end of this placeholder here if I can get to the end of it. It doesn't look like I can. Try an arrow key. There we go press enter and I'm going to enter a new region and I'm going to make sure that my font here is right it's the body font it's normal and I'm going to call this the um, northwestern region now, I'm not worried about formatting it just yet because I'm going to do that in just a second and then I'm going to put the placeholder underneath it I'm just going to copy this one that was a control drag I copied it Control drag copies things in just about all Office programs. And now I just need to get to the properties of that one real quick and change its title from Southern to Northwestern. 
and I'm pretty good. Now what I want to do though is add this to my H2 headers. Now there's a couple of ways I can do it. I can just format it for H2 or since I'm, I might already be on the references tab, I can add this text. When I choose add text, I can designate which level. I want level 2. So now there's a level 2. Looks like these others have a blank line under them and probably before them. So now there's my northwest region all ready to go. Even though I added it using the table of contents add text, it's still not in my table of contents, so I need to update my table again. And now I've got a new thing in there. One thing to be careful of when you do this, though, all the H2s and 3s are automatically added to the table of contents. So if for some reason I choose John Smith's name here and decide that I want to make him a style H3, H3 does not show up under the recommended styles up here. Okay, there's no H3, so I'm going to have to open my styles. And there's no H3 here either. Remember, these are alphabetized. There's no H3 here because I'm only showing from my options the ones that are in the current document. So if I want to add more, I can't use recommended because H3 is not one of the recommended ones. I have to go to all styles, click on OK, and then look through this for H3. I call it H3. That's my HTML coming through. Here's my heading 3 style. And now John Smith has been formatted. It's a bit of a blue and it got a little bit bigger and it's a header font. And so he's a little bit different. But now let's say I go through and I update my table of contents for some reason. Now John Smith is an H3. Looks like he's under the conclusion paragraph. If I want to exclude that, I don't want the H3s in my table of contents because in this case it's not even uh, it's not even part of the contents. To go back to my options, actually I take that back. I have to go to my references, table of contents, and I need to customize my table of contents. Here's my H1, 2, and 3. They're included. <clears throat> if I want to modify that, I use options. Here's the H3. It's included as a level 3 table of contents. If I don't want it included, I just take that out. Click on OK. Do you want to replace the selected table? Yes. And there it is. And John Smith has gone. Notice that that happened right away because I replaced the old table with the modified one so it re-imaged the document or the table of contents. One other thing I didn't mention before is that these things, every one of these, is actually a hyperlink. It doesn't look like it. If you don't touch it, it says control to follow the link, but you have to touch it to see it. Okay, I'm going to go to my tools, options, and go back to advanced and only show my fields when they're selected so I can see my table of contents in its native state a little easier. Okay. Now notice it's not gray unless I touch there, but what you can't see here, unless you know, is that these are hyperlinks. You can touch any one of these and the pop-up shows up, and if I click on control click that, it'll jump to that location. Let's try this control click. The Mac is kicking me again here. Okay, here's my region. That's where I want to go. On a regular Windows machine, you control click. On my Mac here, I have to get a little more creative, but that's okay. And for some reason, there's the, there it was the hand. Click. And it still didn't take me there. Come on. There we go. Just had some Mac issue. Control click and took me down to the Western region. So that table of contents can come in very handy. Imagine a 75 page report and you want to jump to page 43 or a certain header. You can click on it in the table of contents and then you can jump down there. So that's how you insert table of contents and update table of contents. The book shows you a couple other techniques I don't think are quite as valuable, but you can use them as you see fit. Right. <clears throat> and that's table of contents.